Chalk pastels are a medium that can allow you to do really amazing techniques on your card projects. Today I want to share one technique with you in particular that I've fallen in love with and I think you may really enjoy too. Let's take a look at it. Before we get started, I want to show you these cards I had created a few years ago when I had really been diving into all the different options for using pastels on card projects. If you are interested in information in lots of different techniques, after you watch this video, there's a link in the video description below that will take you to this pastels video and you can get even more information that I'm going to share today. Now the technique I have been playing around with that I want to share with you today is the way I created this card right here. And what it involves is stamping Versamark on your project and then using chalk pastels to apply the color over top. And it's a really fun way. It's, it's something totally different than anything I've ever done before. I think you'll really enjoy this. So these are my pastels. They're a specialized kind of chalk basically. So you can see the color assortment I have here. I'm going to share a way for you to create colors that you don't have here. Some of my samples used brown, for example, and I don't have brown here. So I'll show you how I created brown and share some other tips and tricks with you along the way. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing you will want to do to create a project like this is to stamp your image with Versamark ink. So I have my Stamparatus here and I'll bring in the cardstock I'm going to stamp on. This leaf stamp is from the Soft Seedling stamp set. It's a new set that I thought was really beautiful with the color variation and the shading and I thought it would be perfect for this technique. So what I'm going to do is ink my stamp with Versamark ink. What's nice about the Stamparatus is if you don't get this perfect the first time, you could stamp it a second time. Or if you just wanna make sure your ink is really well adhered, you can stamp it a second time that way too, or even a third time if you like. Okay, I am going to do this a second time because this stamp has so much variation in the, the shading basically. Uh, because it doesn't necessarily stamp everywhere the first time. It's got those little dots that are used to create the shading. I'm going to do this a second time. Try and make sure I get plenty of ink onto that paper. Now what I am going to do is bring this in. This is what I was using for my other sample. And I'll show you another, I'll show you another card here after we do this one right here that I think I think you may really enjoy it's a masculine card, but it turned out absolutely beautifully. So what I've done is I took a few of my colors of pastels and my take your pick tool and I shaved, I, I created some shavings onto my silicone craft sheet here. I'll do one more color right now here. I'll do some of this purple so that now I have pretty good assortment of colors for the leaves. I'm looking to see if I'm going to want any colors that I don't have there. And let's do a little bit of this blue. And you may be thinking like, why would you need blue for leaves? But because I started doing some blending of my colors, I think I may actually use some of that blue. So I'll scoot this to the side here. I have sponge daubers and I have one for the different colors pull these in a couple that I haven't used yet for my new colors. And what I am going to start doing is just picking up some of that color onto my dauber and start applying it to the leaf. Now, when you do this, you want to dab, not rub back and forth. So I am going to start by dabbing lightly. When you start doing this, you can dab lightly if you like that is going to leave more room for you to add more colors later on if you start light. And I am just going to play around with these colors. Now on my sample that I showed you, I had used mainly just the blue and I believe that was the red. I don't think it was the purple, uh, but I'm just gonna play around with my colors here. What I found with my other one, I'll show you here at the end, was that blending the yellow and the red 
really gave me a nice brown. And I, I added in a touch of green as well. If you think about your color wheel, if you want to create brown, you can use the colors that are across the color wheel from each other. So I've added a little bit of the yellow in the center to the leaf. Let's go ahead and add some red. And if you find that the color isn't really doing much, just try to pick up more of the color and dab a little bit harder. And we'll do some more red as we work our way out. See if we can get a little bit brighter red. I will mention, you can see this sample I created on white, but I wanted to show you that this is a technique you don't have to do on white because these chalks will show up on top of darker, on top of the darker card stocks. So now I did think the purples would be fun. I may or may not end up using those blues, but I thought some purples would be really neat on the edges of these leaves. And the edges here are picking up more of that color because of the way this stamp was designed. It was designed to stamp darker at the edges, so it is naturally picking up more of my color at the edges where more of that Versamark ink is. And what should we do with the, I forget what the official name is, the, we'll call them whirly gigs. The, what, what is your name for maple leaves, the little seeds that you can play with and get to spin around in the air. Now what I'm going to do, I am going to flip this upside down over trash can. You may or may not be able to see this here and give it a good flick on the backside. What that does is remove some of the excess ink or excess chalk and I can get a feel for what it looks like now. I think I am actually going to add a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit of the purple to the seeds and I realized I have not been switching my dauber as I'm changing colors. I kind of forgot and it hasn't really affected anything. If you wanna do pure colors, like some areas that are just red or some areas that are just yellow, it would be a good idea to switch those so that you don't get blending of your colors. So here you can see the finished result. Hopefully you can see that it's a little bit dark, but in person, this is just beautiful. Now, can you see the little glow of the colors outside of the stamped image? Because of the chalk, you can get a little bit of that. And what I found was if I use my finger or a clean dauber to go around, I wanna be careful and not rub any of the ink on the stamped areas off. But if I go around with this clean dauber or my finger, like I said, it will actually remove some of that if you don't like the look of that glow. Okay, so let's take this, let's, I have a card created right here. We're going to use this piece to finish it right now. And then I wanna show you the other sample I created before I started recording here. This is a piece of rose gold specialty paper. I emboss this with the leaf fall embossing folder, which I think is really neat. I want to add this piece over top. And then I have a greeting created that I will add as well. I will mention this after you stamp your verse mark, dab the colors over top. What you want to do is seal this somehow. If, if you're concerned about the colors coming off, it's good to seal it. What I typically do is set it outside or in my driveway or somewhere just for a minute. I use a little bit of clear spray paint, and I like to make sure it is matte, the kind that is not going to be glossy. Uh, this one is semi-gloss, this works, it doesn't make it shiny because I don't use very much, just a little bit to seal it up and hold those colors in. I have heard that spray or hairspray works as well. I haven't tried that, but if you have some hairspray around and you don't have any spray paint, you could try that. Here is the greeting. I just love, I think this, leaf image is just so pretty for fall or depending on the colors you use it can be used throughout the year uh, it, using other colors as well so there's a nice thinking of you card i created 
Now let's look at my other sample. And here it is, it is a pheasant. I created this with the painted pheasant stamp set. I thought it, any of these natural images, I, I think are really good ones for this technique. And any ones that have, have more coverage. An outline stamp, you, you can do this technique with an outline stamp if you want to, but the ones that have more coverage, like this flower, where it's all filled in, the leaf that we just did, these are the ones that you're really going to get a neat effect. I hope you can see that leaf. It may be a little bit difficult to see, but the pheasant, so I used the painted pheasant stamp set. I used this. I'm looking at what it's called. What is it called? Aspen Trees Dies. This is a beautiful die set. I used this in the background and I actually embossed it after I die cut it. I embossed it with that same leaf fall embossing folder that I used on this one. So hopefully this gives you some fun ideas for ways to use this pastel technique. Like I said at the beginning, if you are interested in more information on pastels, I did a pretty in pretty intense video where I shared, I think like 11 different techniques for how to use pastels. And I'll link you to that in that video description below. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, I'll put links in the description below. If you're new here, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for joining in. I hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.